All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we're going to be answering the question, what is a brush gun? I know that term gets thrown around a heck of a lot. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm going to go grab my brush gun and go get in the deer woods and go after Bambi or whatever. Uh, that's all good and fine. I think the common conventional wisdom that's accepted about brush guns is that they have to be 4570 or 444 Marlin or some big lever action caliber that can punch through the brush and get on to the other side of the brush and uh, get you a humane kill when you're in the deer woods. You know, there's been a lot of stories that have floated around over the years. I'm sure you've heard some of them uh, where a guy sitting in the deer stand shoots at a deer with his 270 or his 308 or whatever high velocity spits or bullet he's using, uh, shoots at a deer through a little bit of brush, the bullet veers off, misses the deer, costs him a trophy of a lifetime because his, uh, he didn't have a brush gun. Okay, so is there any fact to that? Is there any validity to the whole brush gun myth? Uh, we're gonna try to solve that for you today. We're gonna start out with a 22 and then uh, work our way up to the 4570, which many consider to be the ultimate brush rifle. Uh, and you know, I too fall into that type of uh, stigma. Growing up, I was always taught that if you were gonna hunt in thick brush, you wanna use a heavy bullet with a flat nose, something moving slow, heavy, thumping on through that brush and not caring that it's there and getting to the deer. I've always been taught that, but is there any truth to it? So let's find out. This particular rifle is a Henry uh, 4570 all weather. This is one of the new guns that Henry put out this year. Uh, can't wait to shoot this one, but we've got a couple other classics we're gonna show off as well. Let's start out with 22, work our way up. Basically all we're gonna do is put a piece of steel on the other side of some brush and we're gonna shoot through the brush and see if our accuracy is thrown off. Let's do it. All right, first gun we're gonna use, we've got a Ruger M77-22. It's an all weather. Uh, we're gonna fire some CCI mini mags through this brush right here. We got about 15 yards of brush in front of us. So this is uh, not that you would hunt deer with a 22, but we're not advocating that. However, we're using this as a base just to give us an idea if these 22s are gonna get thrown off by all the branches and limbs. So we're gonna be shooting through a bunch of thick stuff right here. And I'm gonna try to, try to find a pretty consistent point of aim and just try to launch them through this brush at our target on the other side. I mean, it is very tough to see. Okay. Well guys, that right there is what we like to call a result. This gun right here will drive tacks at 25 yards. So I know the gun is not off or anything like that. It's not my shooting. I had a consistent point of aim. Only one round hit the target. It tumbled. And then we've got two strikes in the board to the left here where the rounds deflected and they actually tumbled into the board. So that tells us that yes, privet hedge and brush will cause a 22 long rifle to deflect, destabilize, and ultimately you won't hit your target. So there might be a little bit of truth to this whole um, brush gun myth. Of course, I knew that maybe a little bit going into this and we're only at 22, but let's keep going. Now we're gonna hit it with 5.56. Let's do it. All right, that was a pretty interesting result with the 22 long rifle. We're gonna step up to 5.56 out of an 18 inch DMR. We're gonna run just 55 grain, real basic stuff. I'm not trying to get too extensive on the testing of different types of ammo. We just wanna try this 55 as a baseline just to see what'll happen. So again, I'm gonna try to get through there. It's hard to see. It's like one might've missed. Pretty interesting result there with the 5.56. Granted, it's 55 grain. If you're running something a little bit heavier, maybe it would carry through a little bit better, but that's a really awesome result out of an 18 inch barrel. I mean, I'm only 15 yards away, so you know the gun should just literally stack them all in one hole at 50 yards or 100 yards. I mean, a good accurate AR, not in this case. We had one round hit close to center, one of them hit low, and then one of them, almost two feet from my point of aim, it keyholed in the top of the target. So the round that, that you heard it didn't hit, it keyholed through the top of the target. So that right there, if you've got a deer on the other side and you're in the deer woods and you're, and you're shooting through some brush with a high power rifle uh, that's high velocity, spits or bullet, ah, there's some truth to that. Looks like your bullets are gonna deflect. I'll tell you what, we're gonna test a myth, actually two different myths in one video. 
In Vietnam, a lot of the troops preferred the M14 to the uh, M16 because of that very reason. Close in jungle fighting, they're worried about bullets skewering off and everything. They like that 308 because it could punch through that, uh, that jungle brush a little bit better. So I'll tell you what, I don't have an M14, but I do have a BM-59. Let's break it out and uh, shoot a, a little bit of a jungle scenario at the target with 308. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna move up to the BM-59. Awesome rifle, we're gonna shoot some M80 ball. This is EQI M80 ball, pretty standard stuff. Uh, we are 50 yards away. That's one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, so we are a little bit distance away, but we have about 15, 16 yards worth of brush in that, uh, in that distance as well. So I just want to clarify that. All right, BM-59, going for it. Through the brush, jungle style. Do it. Sounds like we got some hits there. Let's have a look. Before I reveal what happened, all right, let me just say that if it were the jungles of Vietnam and a jungle fight, I would rather have a 30 cal over a 223, 556 any day of the week, trust me. But the 308's tumbled too through the brush. We got one hit right there on the edge of the gong. Uh, another bullet missed the gong. However, it did stabilize and it pierced the uh, board, backing board. But one of the rounds tumbled, keyholed into the side of our uh, two by four that's holding our steel plate up and then lumbered on through the uh, back side of the board. So they're still, they've still got a lot of power even though they're, they're keyholing, but you're not gonna get any kind of accuracy through brush. If you're expecting, and again, the vein of this video being if you're a hunter and you're trying to kill a, a, a piece of game that's on the other side of the brush, are you firing a humane shot? to try to take that shot with a certain rifle through the brush. That's what we're trying to prove. And the answer to that is do not shoot through brush with a 308 because you can see it's all over the place and it's tumbling. That's not gonna provide a humane kill. So I think we can prove that high velocity rifle cartridges can generally, in a Spitzer design, tumble. But what, what, what happens when you start getting into more of the flat nose and things like that? So I'll tell you what, let's punch through with the old trusty 35 which is a generally accepted brush gun and see what happens. All right, guys, stepping up to a classic lever gun. This is a 1951 Marlin 336. Oh yeah, 35 Remington, buddy, that's where it's at. This is a well-worn and well-used and well-loved 35 Remington hunting rifle. This rifle literally tells the story of the bushes it was carried through and the time that it was hunted with from the time it was made. And th this is the quintessential in the woods type rifle when you're talking about a 35. But will it live up to that? It's a 200 grain soft point. I'm gonna try to get me a consistent point of aim through the brush here and we're just gonna poke through and, uh, and see what happens. Nice old original 35, here we go. That last one, I don't think it deflected, guys. I think I just missed barely to the left of the gong. I think what this proves, though, if you can see it, you can probably hit it with a rifle like this, but let's not uh, get too excited yet. Let's go see if any of those bullets tumbled. All right, so what we've proved here is that the 35, if you can see it, you can kill it. So definitely no problem there. I mean, I'm shooting at a target that's very difficult to see despite being painted white. So if that puts anything in perspective, just how thick this brush really is, there's no way that, I mean, as long as you can see it, you can kill it. Those two rounds right there stabilized, hit just fine, and then just to the left of the gong, and a nice little triangulation here on the left, once I got a consistent point of aim through the trees, we found that all of those bullets would have been a humane kill, provided you could see uh, the, the area on the deer that you needed to shoot. You know, it's about an eight to 10 inch circle on a deer that you've got to hit to get it right in the boiler room and put that deer down humanely and quickly, okay? And we can see that the 35 is no mystery. It's been doing it for years. All three bullets stabilized. It didn't really affect the accuracy that much. It's not like, you know, like the high velocity cartridges, it seemed like we had one hit real high, one hit real low. The accuracy suffered. In this case, we didn't really see uh, any kind of harm to the accuracy. Not that we can really see at 50 yards. Now, 
in the brush, you're not going to be taking a shot at a deer for over 50 yards anyway. But I tell you what, this proves it pretty well, but let's step up to the 444 Marlin and then on to the mighty uh, Henry 4570. Let's do it. All right, moving up to 444 Marlin. This is a 1972 Marlin 336 that my grandpa bought new in 72. Uh, 444 is basically, this is a 240 grain bullet on a butt stomping charge of powder. So imagine a 44 Magnum on steroids. Basically an elongated 44 Magnum is all it is. Um, a lot of folks over the years uh, have kind of grown more fond of the 4570 compared to the 444 Marlin. Uh, it's a caliber that's really kind of fell to the wayside a little bit, but we are going to shoot it. Give it a little try here, see how we do. Let's see. Boy, it is tough to see through that brush. You would think that I would cheat a little bit, but we're really just kind of winging it. And the sun is popping out on me, and it's going to be really hard to see what I'm shooting at, but I'm going to try. You ready? Whoa! You look like that freaking piece of privet hedge got cut in half. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let me grab that piece of privet and let's look at it. I know it was redneck as crap just then, but that's okay. All right, guys, that was exciting. That 444 pushing on through the brush and doing its job. We pretty much know from hunting with this cartridge for years what it's capable of doing, but it's nice to kind of document it and really show what can really happen. We got two hits on the steel. One hit uh, went over off onto the uh, board over here to the left, but it barely missed, and I think it was just my point of aim shifting a little bit. Once I got those two shots where I wanted them, uh, pretty much centered it up no problem, and that one round went through and busted a big old piece of privet hedge right there. So that shows that the round went through the privet hedge and still carried through to hit the target, which is so awesome. I'm so happy to see that, but I tell you what, this is what everybody's been waiting for. Let's repaint everything, get back, and hit the steel with some 4570. Let's do it. All right, we're breaking out the, the papa of the brush, the uh, Henry 4570 all-weather, 350 grain flat point Hornady. I think you guys can see where this is going. And uh, let's give it a try. No resistance. That privet's just going, you know, I, I don't know if that privet knows what to think. Let's go have a look. I can't possibly think of a better result than that. All three of those rounds landed right in there. We had one that hit just off the side of the gong right there. So despite the fact that one missed the gong, that could have just been me, you know, being a little funky on the sights or whatever. But if you can see it, you can kill it with a 4570 in the brush. We saw one of the rounds impacted another piece of privet in the same location that the 444 did. Those rounds carried right through and did their job. So that is just so awesome. I think what it really proves is velocity, when you're talking the velocity game and you're, you're running like a high velocity rifle cartridge, like a 308 or a 270, that's a popular hunting cartridge, anything like that. You know, that velocity does funky things. When that Spitzer bullet hits a branch or something, it's going to find that kind of path of least resistance, and it's just going to go wherever the branches tell it to. And that is going to upset the flight path of that bullet, and it's going to cause it to destabilize, and it's just not going to be accurate. With that large frontal bearing surface on, those, uh, on a lot of these lever gun calibers, you see that it tends to just really push the branches on through. It just basically shoots right through them, and it continues on a straight flight path, to impact the target. So yes, there is a such thing as a brush gun. And yes, everybody should have one. If you hunt in the thick stuff for Bambi, you need a 4570 lever action rifle or some type of 4570. You can get in there and really lay down the law in the deer woods. i tell you what, as a little bonus, I've been hunting with a little uh, <laughs> Snyder Calvary carbine and a 577 Snyder. Big old honking 560 grain, 58 caliber flat point bullet. Just for fun, academic purposes, let's see how the little 58 Snyder would hold up in the deer woods on the same test.
just for fun, let's do it. Okay, without boring you guys, we're gonna try something kind of silly here. We're gonna take some shots with the 577 Snyder. This is a special little round that I cooked up. I'm not gonna go into too many details at the moment, but it uses a 560 grain uh, Thompson Center Maxi Hunter projectile. Big old honking cast bullet. We're gonna launch some through the brush here. See how well the little uh, workhorse holds up. This gun was produced in 1875. I'm gonna be deer hunting with this this weekend. I'm not gonna shoot through any thick brush if I can help it, but just for fun. <laughs> that sounded like a, a nice loud clang there. Three for three, baby. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's go see what happened. Well, guys, I think I've got the little Snyder figured out in terms of what to do with this thing in the deer woods. I did not expect to hit this gong at all, much less stack three of them within five inches of each other at 50 yards through 15 yards of heavy privet. It just goes to show this bullet is only moving a thousand feet per second, so it's awfully slow. But you heard and you saw that carrying energy that that bullet possesses. Very, very humane kill on a deer. You know, like we've said in the past, a 30 cal, yeah, it expands, but a 58, baby, it doesn't shrink. <laughs> All right, well, get yourself a brush gun and go get in the woods and have some fun with Bambi. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.